Hello, I'm Steve Olson from It's a CAD World. In this video, I'd like to pick up from my previous video where I used some drone photography to create a point cloud using Recap Photo. Now I want to take that point cloud, download it, and then I want to connect it to Civil 3D and InfraWorks. So here I am in Recap Photo. If you watched the last video, you saw the process of creating this task or this job and assigning all the photos, etc. I'm going to use one of the previous ones that I have done to kind of just verify and make sure all the workflow and the model came out properly here. So you can see if I hover over these, you can see I get a little download icon here. So if I click on this download, it's going to ask of where I want to put it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my D drive and my it's a CAD world folder where I put a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to let it download. And once it's downloaded, we'll take a look and see what we've got. It's going to have an RCM file that I can work with in here. That's a mesh format. I really kind of rather have a point cloud format because I feel it's going to work better for me downstream in Civil 3D and InfoWorks. And you'll see that once we get to those points. So I'm going to pause the video real quick while that's downloaded, and then we'll take a look at what our package included. So it's done downloading. You can see it's listed still here, but it's now added a new image here as a current model that it's loaded on the screen. It doesn't show a preview until I've loaded it once, but you can see here it's the RCM, which is mesh-based, which isn't really what I'm looking for. But if I look at my Windows Explorer, you can see I have a train station survey, which is what I called that model. I go in there, you can see I have that RCM, but then I also have a zip folder for the RCS, which is the recap format. Uh, there's a report and then a TIFF. In that case, I did ask for the orthographic imagery to be generated. I'm gonna extract this. And then inside of this folder, you'll see that I have an RCP and then all of the support information that this is structured just like a regular scan project from Recap. So let's open this in Recap to see what our results look like. Come over to Recap here, I'm gonna do an open and I'll browse to where I have that saved. There's my RCS folder, there's my RCP, I'll go to open. So here is this project then. Looks pretty good. At this point, I could use recap to kind of classify points and delete stuff that I think is unnecessary. I'm gonna leave it alone here. If you, I've done videos on that before, and there's also a lot of good help information out there about how to do those things. I'm gonna kind of just leave it as this right now. So how would I connect this model into, let's say, InfraWorks and or Civil 3D? So let's go over to InfraWorks first. So here I am in my InfraWorks inside of the model of this, this general area. I use the address from the project to use the model builder to create this model. And it's basically in this right in this vicinity right here, you can see they've already got buildings that were kind of generated because of the 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 open street map. I'm gonna leave them there just for a reference. If I wanted to, I could delete them, but I'm gonna leave them there just for now. So I'm gonna connect to the point cloud here. I'm gonna go up to my my tools. I'm gonna tell it I want to connect to data sources underneath my my tools to load a model. I'm gonna tell it I wanna to come to a point cloud. And then I just have to find that model, which again was on my C drive or my D drive inside my InfraWorks or my, it's a CAD world folder, train station survey, RCS, RCP. It's gonna bring it in. It still needs configured. So I'll tell it to configure it. See survey, point cloud. 
I'll tell it, uh, you can see the right coordinate system here. I'll tell it to close and refresh, and it'll bring it in there. Now, one thing that I've found is with this, this uh, site survey, sometimes the elevation gets just a little bit messed up. It doesn't look too bad here, but I can tell that it looks, it might just be off by a hair. So if I wanted to, if I went back to this item and I went to the configure, I could change the, the Z offset to kind of raise it up a, a number of meters here. Let's just do five meters here just to kind of get it to refresh that. And see if that lands just a little bit better. That lands a little bit better on the surface. Uh, I'm not sure why the elevation, I've done this on two or three models and every single time the elevation seems to be off by just a, you know, a couple meters. I'm not sure if the elevation of the drone has something to do with that the discrepancy, but it's in the right geolocation. It's just a matter of the, the elevation being uh, off by just a little bit. So there I was able to connect that model here into InfoWorks. And then I might, have, whatever purpose I have for that, if I was going to create some sort of surface off of it or just use it for kind of just references, I do have that model connected here. If I wanted to, I could delete the underlying buildings if I wanted to as well. So now let's say I wanted to bring that building into Civil 3D and create a surface from that point cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a brand new drawing here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my settings tab and set my coordinate system so that building lands in the appropriate location. So I used a CA83-123. And it was in meters still, so that one's that's in good shape, so we'll be fine. So now on my insert tab here, and you can see here I have an attach, and then I have a specific point cloud attach. Realistically, they are the same thing. If I go to this attach, I have a variety of types of files I can attach. Notice that I can set myself to RCP, RCS. If I cancel out of this one and go to this attach, you'll see that I'm kind of limited to RCP, RCS. It's going to do the same thing. It's a little bit different. Uh, I noticed that in 2020, I'm trying to remember if 2019 was the same thing. But in either case, you're going to look for a command called attach. And I just have to go to that same location where I've been pointing or pulling my file from previously. It's going to ask if I want to specify the insertion point. It should be geolocated appropriately here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And you can see now it's landed that exactly where I need it to be. So one of the things that you can do with the point cloud here is I could actually generate a model or a surface from this point cloud. Now this has got a lot of points in it. It's got the building in it. So in that case there, I'd probably would use recap to delete the points or maybe classify them. Uh, I found that even if I classify them, when I go to do it of the entire cloud, it still kind of grabs them. So just to kind of do a simplistic kind of example here, what I'll do is I'll create a surface from sections of this, of this point cloud. So I'm going to go under my home tab here under surfaces. I can say create surface from point cloud. It's going to ask me to pick the point cloud. I'll select it right there and I'll name my surface. Surface from recap. It's going to ask for my style. I'll go ahead and say next. You can see it's trying to do the entire point cloud and that's going to probably take some time. So actually I'm going to remove this and I'll tell it I want to do it from a selection, just adding it from uh, a selection here. So if I kind of go from the top here, I'll make a nice selection. If I want to keep selecting more, I can do that. So 
I can see I've got both selections here. I'm going to go ahead and say next. And then it's going to ask about the filter method. So I've got three different methods here. It will figure out a planar average, which obviously is probably the least likely of what I want. It's going to be pretty flat, which is going to not be correct. The Kring interpolation, where it's going to try to figure out trends in a realistic surface or no filter at all. And it's going to end up you know, leaving the points exactly where they are. It's up to you how you want to do this. I can always just use the Kring interpolation just because it feels like it's the the best approach, at least for, for me and what I've seen. Uh, feel free to kind of choose what you want. I'll hit create surface here and it's going to say it's going to take some time. It's going to process it in the background. I'll get some messaging here about it processing in the background. And after a couple minutes here, I should have some sort of results. The length of time it takes to calculate obviously has something to do with the quantity of points that I have also has to do with just how how strong of a machine I have and how much data it can crunch to create that. Once I have it, I'll have um, a dialog box pop up telling me that it's created it. I should have uh, it added to my prospector as well. And then if I wanted to, I can turn use the point cloud manager to turn the display off of the point cloud so I can see my surface by itself. Uh, if I want to leave it on, I can leave it on for comparison's sake. So I'm going to kind of just pause the video here for a couple of minutes while it calculates it. Then once it's done, I'll kind of show you what we've got. So you can see I've got the event viewer that popped up and it's kind of giving me some information about certain points were being ignored because of duplicates. And that's probably because I had some overlap. And that's fine. I was actually intentionally overlapping to make sure I didn't miss anything or have some weird gap inside my surface. So it's listed there. It's kind of hard to see maybe because it's behind the point cloud or the point cloud's really close to it. What we can do is we can actually use the point cloud manager, which I usually just type that command into the command prompt or into my, dyna my dynamic uh, prompts here. And I just can tell it to turn off the whole point cloud there. And you can see I've now got my surface because of the, the shape that I had. I can probably clear this out a little bit here. But you can see I've got now a surface that I can start building from. And that's kind of the main way that lots of people are using these point clouds from these drone surveys is bringing them into Civil 3D, creating surfaces from them. And then if they need to, they can go back and do surveys, get maybe more fine-tuned information. But this is a real quick way to kind of get some starting data so you can start building the project or maybe compare this with uh, an actual survey. So uh, if I wanted to, I can bring that point cloud back on and I can start working uh, with this surface and start refining it. It basically will behave just like any other surface here in Civil 3D. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope you found the information useful that you can apply to your normal workflows. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.